oh, I'm tired. I'm tired of them not doing it the way I want them to. I must listen to, I must have finished all of these books. This can't go on. This is your next read. There you go. It's your next read. Hello and welcome back to my channel. My name's Lena and I often talk about the books that I'm reading. That's it. That's what we're doing here today. I do quarterly wrap ups of the stuff that I'm reading using the stats from the story graph, which is the platform I use to track my reading. If you want to see a whole video about the story graph, it's up here. But today we're going to discuss my reading in Q2. <laughs> Never not brainwashed by that office environment. But before we get into the books, if you haven't been here before, and you'd like to be here again. You even have an inkling that you might want to be here again. Let's not lose each other in the ether. Come and subscribe and then you'll be able to see my face more often. And we'll be able to have chats about books until we die, probably. April, May and June, let's go. So last time we spoke, I think I'd read 27 books in 2021. I'm now on 52. I'm still four books ahead of my 100 books in the year goal. And I'm feeling pretty smug about it. I am, however, <laughs> 208 pages behind on my pages goal of 30,000 pages, which basically just tells me I've been reading some short books. My moods have stayed, well, not my moods. <laughs> My moods have fluctuated, but the moods of my reading have stayed pretty stable. I'm still mainly reading reflective and emotional books. And the pace is pretty medium. I'm reading books mainly under 300 pages, but my non-fiction and fiction split has really been thrown off by my women's fiction prize reading list. Uh, if you haven't seen, I read all 16 books on the women's prize long list and I have a video about that up here if you want to watch it but it meant that I was reading a lot more fiction than I usually do and a lot more literary fiction so it's affected my fiction to non-fiction ratio planning to batter that down <laughs> like a gopher at a fun fair as the year goes on but that's how that stands it's never looked like that before um and it also means that I've been reading mainly contemporary and literary fiction because that's what's in the prize. Where we come to a roller coaster is the graph of reading that I've been doing since I last spoke to you. So I had a really big reading slump in February. But I think that's also to do with the fact that story graph was only counting the pages that you've read in a book at the moment when you finish the book. But actually, they've now updated the way they're recording it. So if you track your reading and you say, oh, I'm actually 50% of the way through this book in one month, as I understand it, that will still count towards your reading for that month, even if you don't finish the book. Am I making any sense? <laughs> so I think that's why my reading looks a little bit haphazard at the beginning of the year and then a little bit more stable as we go into the middle of the year. But it has been dropping quite a bit. And I've been really like reflecting on whether this is a failure or not for me. I don't think it is. In the same way that sometimes I reject this idea that like the screen time on your phone is bad, if you then go into the stats of it and it tells you you've been watching YouTube or you've been on Audible, like I don't regret the time that I spend listening to podcasts, listening to video essays on YouTube, reading audiobooks. So I know that recently I've been watching a lot more YouTube, some more films. I've been re-watching The Lake House yet again. <laughs> I don't get why everybody hates that movie. Anyway, and I know that I haven't been not engaging in the arts. Do you know what I mean? So I don't really feel that bad about it, to be honest. And I've been having a great time listening to podcasts. The New Witch Please episodes are just next level literary genius. So yeah, I don't know if that helps you at all when you feel bad about the fact that you like technically on paper haven't been reading that much. Just reflecting if you've still been taking time out for yourself to listen to other people's voices, to have some reflective time, to engage with other kinds of media, and then don't always put the pressure on books. Like books have like a very big academic prestige and people like to read them. I obviously love to read them, but like there's no moral obligation for you to fulfill this graph in a really great way, just in case you needed releasing from that invisible stronghold. But I guess I can talk because I'm still four books ahead. I don't know how that's happened because I really feel like I've fallen off. Let's talk about the books I've been reading since I last spoke to you. So the last book I had read when we did our catch up was Such a Fun Age. Since then, I have read Piranesi, Exciting Times, The Vanishing Half, Consent, Detransition Baby, Burnt Sugar, Summer, Luster, Small Pleasures, Unsettled Ground, Nothing But Blue Sky, How the One-Armed Sister Sweeps Her House, First Comes Love, Last Night, Blackout, This Can Never Not Be Real, The Secret to Superhuman Strength, Trick Mirror, The Rest of Their Lives, The Lipstick, Are You Enjoying, A Long Petal of the Sea, Too Much Lip, Reputation, 
and heartburn. Now I'm not gonna cover what I thought of all the women's long list books because there's a whole video about that already. And I'm also not gonna talk about the books that I mentioned in my armchair travel video. If you wanna watch that, it's up here. Looking back at what I've read, definitely the best things I've read since we last spoke was Piranesi, The Vanishing Half, Unsettled Ground, Blackout, definitely. That is such a really cozy comfort read. Too Much Lit, A Long Petal of the Sea. They're all books that I've loved, but I've talked about before. But here are some ones that I really think you should take a look at. Now, First Comes Love is one that I'm planning to talk about in a video very soon. So I won't go into it too much, but basically Tom is a non-binary queer person reflecting on the archaic idea of marriage and in what ways it could possibly be applicable to their life and to the lives of people who fall outside of the ideals of what marriage seems to think it is. Um, it gave me so much to think about. It's written in a really funny, approachable way. Um, Tom also identifies as working class and talks a lot about the kind of class implications of how we fetishize marriage, but then also how it's kind of a beautiful thing still because humans are involved in it and humans can be good. They ask, is it an achievement, a compromise? Are you a sellout if you get married? Is it a great practical solution? Can it still be romantic? Um, it's a really unusual nonfiction book and I'd like to see more nonfiction books about this topic because I couldn't honestly find that many that weren't heavily academic. So I definitely recommend that. Mario McFarlane, one of my favorite authors literally ever, obviously released another book in April and obviously I downloaded it on my Kobo and read it almost straight away. It's again, a great one. It didn't knock any of my like old time favorite Mario McFarlane's off their top spots, but it definitely delivered. And if you're looking for a rom-com, this one deals a lot with grief, then do definitely look at it. But I, you know, I feel like I bang my Mario McFarlane drum quite frequently on this channel. Trick Mirror is one that one of you suggested to me. I think it was somebody in the Gumption Club, uh, put it on my TBR every year. I make a TBR with some suggestions from Patreon members uh, in it. And this is one that I, I kind of got oversaturated with essay collections by journalists about the internet. And I honestly probably wouldn't have picked this up, not because I knew anything about the author or the topic, but just because of the premise, I was like, oh, I'm tired. I'm tired of them not doing it the way I want them to. I'm tired of it not feeling original if you actually spend time on the internet. I'm just tired. Um, Trick Mirror wasn't that. It pierced my heart into several pieces. I listened to the audiobook and it gave me so much to think about, um, especially when it comes to self-surveillance, how race intersects with self-surveillance. Gia was also a reality star uh, before reality stars were like a huge thing and the internet was around. So she talks about her experience as a young person being uh, on TV and then like kind of almost being forgotten by like the public eye because people just instantaneously forget you after you leave a reality TV show, or at least they did. And I have no doubt that I'll be quoting her essays in like more videos coming up because so many of them made me think so hard about the mechanisms of my life and how I view. It sounds really fluffy to be like, how I view productivity. It's like, yes, everybody knows that productivity is capitalism and blah, blah, blah. But more about viewing yourself as a machine and it kind of used the internet as a vehicle to talk about bigger topics rather than it being focused on like, is the internet good or bad? Let's try and work it out, <laughs> you know? So this is a book that did have loads of hype around it. And I actually would say that the hype is worth it. This is an excellent, excellent collection of essays and you shouldn't miss it. You shouldn't. Um, Laura Dockerall came out with a kid's book called The Lipstick. <laughs> if you are interested in kid's books, it, it's a brilliant one. She read it in a live event for the Hay Festival and it was pure magic. And one that I haven't actually noted down here, but I should talk to you about is a book called The Pirate Mums, which I need to add to my story graph. And is again, a picture book. So if you are somebody who reads picture books to small children or likes to read them alone with a a glass of wine like me. Um, the Pirate Mums is written by a woman I used to work with called Jodie, who is an absolute brilliant uh, powerhouse uh, in the publishing industry, uh, but is also part of a team of mums, the two mums. And uh, she's written a book called The Pirate Mums, all about kids growing up with two mums. And it's absolutely phenomenal. You should check it out. Speaking of plugging my friends, Lex has written this incredible book called Reputation. It's a Regency era rom-com, kind of like the, like on the internet, it says Mean Girls meets Bridgerton, which I think is a pretty fair assessment. It touches on queerness. It doesn't just have white people in it. Uh, and it's it's just a, a load of fun. Like I am always a mixture of brimming with secondhand excitement and a little bit nervous when people I know write books, because I'm always like, please, 
please let me like it. And Lex has such a deep-seated skill uh, in humour that comes through in this book, but it's also really authentically Regency. Like there's, there wasn't any like modernised sentences that sat too uncomfortably in the way it was written. The only thing that is like probably a little bit unrealistic is how much unchaperoned time uh, these teenagers in this book have together. I'm, I'm sorry, they're not teenagers, they're like young adults. They're like 20, 21, 22. But it is the most delicious romp. Uh, they've done such a good job of it. And it kind of humanized a lot of the Regency era people that I imagine moving around the world, if that makes sense. Because obviously Jane Austen was writing in her own time and therefore was restricted by the proprieties of her own time and the people she was publishing for. So she, if th if this kind of like debauchery and like scandalous behavior was happening, I imagine she couldn't publish it. So I like to imagine that some of the stuff in this book is possible and real. And if you're looking for like escapism 101, where you can imagine rich ballrooms and scandals and emotionally high, but in reality quite low stakes, fiction, this is your next read. There you go, it's your next read. Currently, I am reading more books than I should be. So you can <laughs> hold me to this later. Um, but I am reading The Reading List, Pleasure Activism, Against Empathy, Watchmen, How to Be a Poet, Black and British, Written by numbers and why we eat too much. That's not okay. I have got a very distracted mind at the moment and I just feel like every time I want to read, I have a very specific thing in mind. I'm also really struggling to finish nonfiction because I feel like it needs all of my attention and my attention is very divided this month for some reason. So next time I do a catch up, I must listen to, I must have finished all of these books. This can't go on. The one that I'm most enjoying at the moment that I'm reading is The Reading List by Sarah Nisha Adams. Full disclosure, again, I do know Sarah. We work together uh, at Vintage Books. She was such a talented editor that I was very confident that this was gonna be good. And so far it's brilliant. It follows Alicia and Mikesh. Mikesh is like an older man who's just lost his wife and Alicia is a younger woman. And it's about their lives crossing over in a public library and how the reading lists change their lives. Um, so, so far I'm really engrossed in it. Uh, I'll give you an update on what I thought of it in my next update, but I just wanted to let you know that it's a thing and it's coming out in the UK on the 22nd of July. Um, so if you are, a bookish person who loves books about books and people who love books set in libraries um i just wanted to flag this but yeah tell me what you have been reading in the comments please i always want to hear and if you've had a reading slump how you feel about that let's unpack it together i'll leave a link to my story graph where you can see all of the books i'm talking about below and if you enjoy book videos with my face in it here are some suggestions of things you can watch next. This video and all the ones you watch like it have been made possible by The Gumption Club, other people who tip me per video to make sure these videos keep happening. Thank you so much for watching. You can, what else can you do? You can follow me on Instagram if you want. Alternatively, as Roald Dahl says, throw away your television, throw away your phone. Who fucking needs it anyway? You've got books. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being here today. Thank you for being here today. <laughs> I'm losing it. Frog snug out. Oh, fuck snug out.